yes, genetics. Yeah. This is super fun, and 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 it's a very important um, a very important part of this hobby. So here we have the X Y sex determination system that we are familiarized. So we know that females have two X chromosomes, males have X and Y, and for that reason. In humans, the default sex would be women. However, males decide the offspring of the, I mean, the sex of the offspring, okay? You already know that. So here we have the ZW sex determination system. And it's pretty much the same thing, but the other way around. It's the opposite. Here you can read the ZZ, ZW uh, letters, but some people, prefer to use X and Y, it's the same thing, but bear in mind that here, the homo homoformic uh, individual is the male. It's got the double chromosome, okay? So that's homoformic. The heteroformic is the female. So what does it mean? That in birds, males are the default sex, but the female decides the sex of the offspring. And you know, some scientists have wondered, why is that? I believe that it's because of sexual selection. And uh, think of the extreme characteristics of some birds like the peacock, right? With that big tail. And yeah, it's good to fool females, but does it help fly? No. Uh, does it help with camouflage to keep predators away? No. So maybe that's the reason why that females in birds, reptiles, and some insects with the ZW sex determination system is the female that decide the sex of the offspring. And I'm gonna come back to it because there is a lot about this feature and pigeons, okay? So um, I would like you to uh, know that pigeons have three colors and only three colors, okay? So they are either ash red, blue or brown. Those are the only three colors that pigeons may have. Pigeons are also the result of a pattern. A pattern, it's how that color is distributed along their body and they are either T-check, check, bar or barless. Okay, so only four patterns and only three colors. And then there is a bunch of modifiers. So modifiers are really cool genes that distribute the color in very peculiar ways, as we will see in a minute. So let's talk about color. A color, it's produced by melanin, just like we have melanins that gives us our skin color. Birds also have melanin that create that pigment to protect them from the weather and sunlight. Now, the one in the center, the blue bird here, it's called blue or black, but we like to say blue in the hobby. Uh, it's the wild type, the original bird. But we had a mutation. And you know that with many other, think of dogs, uh, humans like to play with these mutations. And once there was that mutation for ash red. And ash red happens to be dominant over blue. What does it mean? Whenever we breed this, these two birds together, we would end up with ash red. Okay, we'll talk more about that later, but bear in mind that ash red is dominant over blue and blue is dominant over brown or brown is recessive to blue. Okay, so try to remember that. And I can show you uh, something really cool about colors. And here I have one of my birds. And if you can type in the chat, what's the color of this bird? Hmm. Anybody can describe the color of this bird? You can type it there and it should be easy, right? To let me open the chat and it's white. Hey, great team, it's white, but guess what? No, this bird is actually blue and it carries brown. It's blue and it carries brown, meaning to say that my offspring are likely to be blue and recessive of brown because white it's not a color is the absence of color so this bird it's hiding two colors we'll talk more about it later but cocks have 
two colors because actually the color of birds are located in the sex chromosome. So that is something really cool. If we go back to the slide over here, hopefully I can go back. Uh, there we go. So you see all these ZZ, um, all these ZZ chromosomes. So that's where the color is located. So the female has only one color and that's the only color that she can express. So if we see a, a, a female that it's blue, she's just blue. On the contrary, males may have a blue color, but also have brown in this other sex chromosome, okay? So we're gonna keep on talking about, um, about this genetics, but that's something really cool that not many other birds have. So here we have the uh, pattern. So pattern, this bird, it's hiding a color and it's hiding a pattern. I know that this bird, it's bar, just like the one we see over here. But remember that the white, the absence of color, it's hiding it. Um, and those are the only four patterns that pigeons may have, okay? So in pigeons, we have T check, check, bar, and barless. And T check is dominant over check. Check is dominant over bar, and bar is dominant over barless. The wild type, the original, is bar. But all these uh, genetic mutations happen, they were kept by breeders. And now we have this barless, of course, is recessive, it's more difficult to breed barless birds, but we can do it, okay? And then we got a bunch of modifiers. These are all my birds and modifiers, they are not in the sex chromosome. So that means they are auto autosomic. So both the female and the male can carry it. They can hide it. And on the top, we can see, let me try to use the laser, laser point. This is my Ferdinand, one of my favorite birds. That's a grizzle and the grizzle modifier it kind of bleaches the feathers, okay? The spread here, this bird um, is black, but it's the same color as this other bird over here, or this other bird over here, or this other bird over here. The spread gene is just spreads all that blue or black color over. So we got a stencil kind of like making a little line over the feathers. That's a really cool color. We got opal, we got dilute. We're gonna talk more about dilute, which is like a pale color. Uh, we got smoky, recessive white, the bird that I just shown you. Remember that this bird is actually blue carrying brown. And it's also carrying this grizzle modifier and it's also carrying faded. Now, this one is the same bird. So here we have him with 45 days. Here we have him with a year old and the faded gene darken the feathers over time. So that's another cool gene that gives you cool colors, okay? So remember the XY sex determination system, birds have the ZW sex determination system. And with that said, I would like to talk to you about some sex link recessive traits in humans, hemophilia. There's a bunch of letters here and there, very easy to understand. So, you know, Mendel, the, the three Mendels, um, the three laws of Mendel's in the 1800s and later on uh, Panet worked on it and he created this wonderful square that helped me understand and helped me forecast the color of my birds. So let's first work on hemophilia. So here we have men X and Y and here we have a woman X and X and the uppercase H stands for dominance. The lowercase h stands for um, stands for recessive. You know that hemophilia, it's when you have a problem, uh, you don't create enough platelets and you can, uh, when you have a wound, you can bleed too much. So it's a disorder and it's located in our sex chromosome. So here we have the case of a woman who is not hemophilic. She doesn't have to lowercase h, but she's a carrier because she, takes it with her, okay? It's hidden inside her. Men, 
either they have it or they don't because they are, only have one uh, sex chromosome that carries that information, okay? So we see that he's got the dominant H, he's not hemophilic. So what would be the result of the offspring? Here we have a dominant for hemophilia girl, that means she's normal. Here we have an, a, a girl who is just exactly like the mother. So she's not hemophilic, but she's a carrier, okay? So here we have a boy and the boy, it's normal. So we have dominance of hemophilia. So that means he's not hemophilic. But here we have a boy by crossing all these H, so there's nothing here. And I cross that H over here. This is how you work on the planet square. I would just simply move in that H over here and that H over here, that H over here and that H over here and so on, okay? And this boy, it's hemophilic. That's the reason there are so many hemophilic boys or colorblind boys, because this is a sex-linked recessive trait disorder that either men have it or they don't, and girls can have it and also have the ability to pass it on, to be a carrier. So it's the same thing with birds, okay? And I got some drawings for you to better understand, but this is a real case scenario. I'm about to show you those birds in a minute. And that is uh, the case for the dilute modifier. So here on the top, we have a female, okay? It's a blue female. Remember that it's the female, the one that is um, homomorphic, so only one Z sex chromosome. Um, I, mean, uh, I mean, heteromorphic, it's got two different homo uh, chromosomes. And then we have the male with the homomorphic, two equal, uh, chromosomes, just the opposite of humans, okay? So here we have the cock, and here we have the female. And if we cross this dilute um, modifier, we would end up with exactly the same scenario, but uh, with a female in this case, okay? So we would combine all these chromosomes, and then D stands for dominant dilute, that means no dilute happens. Lower case stands for recessive, okay? So it's a recessive trait. So he is the one that hides it. He's not, I can see that he's not yellow, recessive like this one, like dilute like this one, but he carries it. And when we combine these chromosomes, Z and Z, this one is just like the father. So here we have a, 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 a male who is a carrier. Here we have a male who is dilute. So here we would have the yellow bird. And here you can see my birds. That's the na his name is Rohete. Here we have the female. Her name is Demsika. And this one was born recently and doesn't have a name yet. And you can see the planet square. There is a uh, three to one ratio, 25% chance of getting a dilute hen and only hen. You see, that's the only way. So when that bird was eight days old, I would check the color of the feathers and I was like, that's a hen. I know it's a hen already. I don't have to go uh, to a lab to make a, 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 like a gene test because science works, okay? So science was able to tell me that that could only be a hen. Uh, so with that said, uh, all colors are sex linked. So Remember I told you that ash red is dominant over blue, and blue dominant over brown. So here on the top, we have a similar case scenario. And on the top, we have a female. So remember one single um, Z chromosome. Uh, on the bottom here, we have a male, the double chromosome, and he's homozygous. What does homozygous mean? Remember that Cox, have a color that they display, the more dominant, and they also hide a recessive color. They also have another color in them. Females, the color they have is the color they have. They cannot hide another one, okay? Because that color is in the sex chromosome. So these are the combinations. If we combine Z and Z, what would we end up here? We would end up with a female who is red and she carries blue. We well, would we'll end up here with a, uh, I mean, with a, a male, sorry. We would end up with a female that is blue 
we would end up with a male that is red and carry blue, we would end up with a female that is blue. So exactly the opposite. The son would inherit the color of the mother and the daughter would always inherit the color of the father, okay? That can happen when the color of the mother is more dominant than the color of the, of the father, of the male, okay? And we know that ash red is dominant over blue. So let's see a similar scenario. So both birds are ash red. And here on the top, we got the female, she's red and she doesn't hide anything. That's the only color she has, that's the only color she expresses, okay? But him, he's red and he carries blue. Do you see he carries blue? So what would we end up here with a cock who is red and it's gonna become homozygous for red, okay? Homozygous, sorry. What would we end up here with a female who is red, okay? Remember, only one gene for females. Here we have a red cock and a heterozygous. He would be carrying blue, just like the father. And here we have a female that would be blue. So another 25% three to one ratio, okay? So that would be a little bit of genetics and that helps me get the color of my pigeons at my convenience, all right? So I'm gonna move on to the left and I'm gonna call from my cell phone in a minute, connect here with my cell phone. Then you can ask questions, we can check out some little chicks and because I won't have uh, access to the laptop, to the computer anymore, I will show you the last slide. That's my daughter and she's telling you all you need is stuff, okay?